Okay guys, welcome to the third and final part of this uh, tutorial about uh, procedural Dreamcatcher. Now we are going to create our materials uh, for our group node. So we can start with the web, for example. I'm going to show you some potential possibilities that you can create from your own uh, the material that you want. Go to the shading editor. We can select uh, our Dreamcatcher, go to material, press new, rename it in web. We can create a material for our icospheres. We can create the material for the internal circle. We can use a different uh, material for our dots or crystals, dots. I'm not going to use a new material for the external circle because uh, I would like to use the same approach of the internal circle but uh, changing maybe the color of this uh, internal circle. So I will add the external circle material next. I'm going to create the material for the branches. I already have the material for the feather, but I can add here a new material and select this from this part, feather. I need to add another material for the feather base, if I want, perfect. And now I'm going to spend a minute about a thing. You can see in our geometry nodes, we used the UV map of internal circle, external circle and web. And we need also the UV map of our branches. So we need to go to this branch profile and we need to link this UV map to a reroute because I need to go here to the group output, link this to this new group output, rename it in branches, UV map, drop this link, UV map branches so branch and branch also here okay perfect now you can see we have four uv maps output with the, the correct name of the output attribute to use in our shading editor but keep in mind this thing if you are using more than one profile that share the same uv map information so uh, you want to use the same uv map concept with only one output you can't use this approach so you can't use a unique output attribute in the group output because as you can see i have the uv map made on these curves on these profiles of the branches and if i want to use the same uv map attribute to the profile of this line with this approach i can't because you can see i have here the profile of my translated line but here we have the uv map and i can't link these to the group output because there's already a link here with the branch uv map so how to fix this issue it's simple you don't need to use an attribute in the group output but you need to use a stored name attribute so if you use a store name attribute here in the output part of this uv map and use it here after the curve to mesh so imagine that i want to have this store name attribute here i can link the mesh inside this geometry save for each point the vector of this uv map and here we can use the same name for all the profiles that you have in your layout okay and when you are going to uh, join all the geometry together you will be able to use the same attribute in the shading editor using the same material for all the profiles that you are using it's obvious we'll be able to use the same attribute now for this tutorial i'm going to use the approach of the output attribute here but in the end i will show you how to delete the group output attribute and use the second approach that i described now so using the store name attribute instead of using the attribute in the group output now i can select the, the material here the web the internal circle the dots the branches for the branches and the icosphere i can use the 
same of the dots, for example, the feather, the feather base, and we are ready to create the shaders. So go to shading editor. We can start with the internal circle. So select from this menu, not from this menu, but from this slot, the internal circle. We can go in the modifier stack, go down to see what is the name of the UV map that we can use in our shading editor. So the UV map int, and we can add an attribute, set here the UV map int, shift control and click to see the color. You can use the separate vector to see better the X gradient. So you can see this gradient here or the Y gradient. Okay, we will use the X, it's obvious, to create our gradient and it's easy. You can select these, use a color ramp and link the color in the color. But shift control and click to the BSDF principal shader and we have a single gradient. But if you want more than one, we can use several methods. You can use, uh, for example, a math utility and use a ping pong, for example, like the modeling, dividing this value by this value of a ping pong itself. We can set this 0.5, link this to the value and link this to the divide, link this value to the factor. And here we have a ping pong effect. If I decrease to 0.2, we have more than one. And if I set the 0.01, for example, you can have this wave effect. So if we want to use the original wave effect, we can use the wave texture. And for the vector of this brands you need to use the X for example and if I link this vector here I have the same result and if I increase or decrease the scale I can increase the number of my black rings so you can see the weird effect here because blender starts to interpolate uh, uh, to the opposite side uh, the value of the factor along this curve so because this curve is uh, a cyclic curve the last uh, segment has this uh, opposite interpolating value from uh, 1 to 0 and you can see the same number of the gradient the waves uh, along this curve or again uh, to this piece of curve. And if you want to fix this problem, you can see the my previous video up or in the link in the description. And you can see, you can choose whatever technique you want to have this effect. Changing the color ramp, you can have a different color like this, and you can use the same output of this ping pong effect with a bump node, link this to the height, decrease the strength, and link the normal into the normal of the principal BSDF. For example, to have a more realistic bumping on this internal circle. Now we can make the material of the dots. So we can select here the dots, and we can create a semi-transparent object. So to do this, we can use a random attribute from the object info node. So if we press shift, control and click many times to have this random attribute, you can see I have a random value from 0 to 1 for each crystal and we can use these to have a different color ramp factor and different color between, for example, uh, light orange and dark, okay, color like this. We can link these to the base color, decrease the roughness to zero, increase the transmission to one, and you can see the uh, result in this moment if I press shift, control and click, uh, because we have uh, opaque object and to have a, a real transparent object we need to go here in the attribute of our material go down and in the viewport display you need to click on the blend mode alpha hashed and if you are using ev for the engine check this screen space reflection if you want more realistic result depending on your needs now i can change the color ramp here to have a light more light 
color. Now you can see we are using the same uh, material to the end of these uh, branches. Now we can go on the web material. We can select these from this menu. We can use the attribute that we have here, the UV map web attribute. So F3 attribute. We can set here the UV map of the web. We can use the vector and separate it with the X and Y and Z. Shift, Control and click to see the values of the web. You can see this bad result. You can see we have not a uniform gradient from 0 to 1, so the factor from 0 to 1, because on our geometry nodes we have these, the mesh boolean to the end of the web profile. So in this case we lost some of the information about the UV map saved here, because the mesh changed. So if I mute for a moment this mesh boolean, so the boolean operation that deletes some of the mesh inside this circle, you can see if I return to the shading the correct gradient of each curve from 0 to 1 now is correct and I will be able to create a stretched noise inside of this texture. So if I take the noise texture here, if I use this vector to this noise texture, Ctrl Shift and click, increase the scale of the noise, you can see this effect on the web. If I add a vector mapping in the middle and scale down the X, you can see I can stretch the entire noise uh, effect. I increase this, okay, perfect. And we can use this factor as the base color of our web, for example. And how can I use this workflow with this mesh boolean? We need to maintain and save the information about the UV map of each point and of each face, in this case, before the mesh boolean to maintain the information also after this node. So to do this, we need to store what a float number, not a vector, a float number of the separated vector of the UV map, link the X, so one flow of information, the gradient from 0 to 1 of the factor. In this store name attribute, link this geometry here. We can set a similar name as the UV map web, so UV map web X information. We can duplicate it, link the same geometry to also save the information of the Y, that is the information around the mesh, the profile of the curve. And after this, we can link this geometry to the first mesh in this mesh boolean. In this way, we can save the information of the UV map for each point, but it's not finished. We need to link not the point, but we need to set the face corner because each point of our mesh has information along the direction of each face that it has. And we need to maintain this information along each direction or the UV of each face of the entire mesh. So to do this, we need to link the face corner instead of the point. Doing this, we can move this a little bit here, move the mesh boolean a little bit, move this node a little bit after. We can drop this line that connects the UV map to the output of our group output and for this we can delete completely the attribute because we have already saved the UV map about the X component and Y component inside the face corner of our mesh. So control, right drag, cut this link, delete this output of the web. Now we can return to the shading editor and select from this UV map web only the X information and we don't need the separated XYZ because we have one unique factor and if we want to use both of the X and Y you can shift D to duplicate the node, select Y in the second attribute, use a combine XYZ, link this first factor to the X, the second to the Y, for the Z you can leave a zero and link this vector to the vector 
center of the mapping of our noise. Delete these, shift, control and click and you can see our noise effect stretched also with the mesh boolean node on our geometry nodes. This is a little tip for this tutorial. If we want to change the color we can link the color to the color ramp and change whatever color you want. So I want to link a light orange and a darker orange for example. Ctrl shift and click and this is the result. Now external circle. For the external circle you can see we can use the same approach that um, of the internal but there is a different if I take this internal circle, I duplicate it, I rename it in external circle and if I select from this stack modifier the external circle like this, the external circle material, I can set here the UV map ext because we have another UV map for the external part. But look, we have not the same frequency of the wave equal to the value of the internal circle. Why this? Because between these two curves, this curve and this curve, we have a different factor. So if we want to have the same number of loops we need to do two different things. You can choose what way you need. One is to manipulate this value, multiplying it by a coefficient that is the relationship between the length of this circle and the length of this circle. So if this length is 1 and this is 10 times this one, you need to multiply by 10. And another way is not to use in the geometry nodes the UV map node like this because this UV map if you press tab and this is shared for all the nodes that use this UV map group you can use not the length but the factor spline parameter saved inside these uh, two curves to get the UV map. In fact if I link not the length but if I link the factor here in this node you can see if I return to the shading editor I have the same loop of the internal circle also to the external circle but the material is different okay you can choose whatever technique you want now in this tutorial I will maintain the length and this will be also in the file that you can download from my Gamrod page and I will increase this value of the ping pong to have a value similar to the internal circle. Also, instead of using this bump effect, we want to use a linear gradient as a triangular graph and have a displacing map on this external circle. So to do this, we need to have not ping pong here, but we need a fraction effect to have multiple time values from zero to one. I have one here, okay, like this. So we want to have an effect like this because we have a vector that goes from zero to the maximum length and we pass the information through this fraction that every one unit restart from zero and goes to one. So here we have a color ramp that we can invert to see better the result of zero value and one, so the, the correct gradient. And you can see the gradient from zero to one and again from zero to one, from zero to one, not one exactly because it's excluded in the fraction mathematical operation but you can think this from 0 to 1 etc but we want not only this we want to use this output value not colorized not in a bump map node but in a displacement map we can link this value to this scale link this displacement to the displacement of the material input and in EV you can see the effect of this displacing result because we need to go to the material input information here of our external circle open the settings information and on this attribute of the displacement of the surface check not bump but uh, displacement only or if you are using also the bump select displacement and bump 
Not only this, you can see the effect of the displacement only for the cycle engine. So go to the engine here, leave the cycles uh, render engine selected. Uh, you can select the, the GPU compute and uh, feature set to experimental to be able to enable a modifier after the geometry nodes. So save the project before this step. Uh, add a subdivision surface. It will take a long time. You need to select the simple and not Catmull Clark feature. And if you are using the experimental feature, you can see this adaptive subdivision. It's important that you have this uh, subdivision modifier to the end of the stack modifier. Otherwise, you can see this uh, check even if you have the experimental feature enabled and check the adaptive subdivision click this in this button to see the cycle ng on the viewport okay blender crashed so i changed the, the device to cpu and i selected 0.07 to the scale of my displacement i set a light gray here for the color of global world lightning and click this button to see the viewport shading and you can see the result of the external circle with the displacement effect so we can return to the ev selection to have a better performance and avoid the crashing by blender we can decrease a little bit the noise of the branch so we can set 0.8 for example now we can think to the branches we can go here to the material select the branches and we can use the same approach of the uv map so we can set the external circle the web material select the these nodes ctrl c select the branches ctrl v g to move link the color to the color of the principal bsdf and we need to use not these two attributes but only one attribute called uv map branches and if we go to the geometry nodes select these select the modifier of the geometry nodes we can see here the branch uv map and the output of uv match branch so we can do ctrl c go to the shading editor ctrl v we can use a separate xyz to separate the vector for the x information and you can see here the values from 0 to not 1 because you remember that we have not a factor but a length information and to have the factor we need to go to the geometry nodes go to the uv map on the profile of the branches so here branch profile and on this group node we need to rename these in uv map length for example to have all the five uses of this group called like this we can click this button to have an isolate and new copy of the uv map we can call it uv map factor tab to enter in this new group node and link the factor instead of the length and with this operation if we return to the shading editor we have a gradient from 0 to 1 starting from each start point and the end here so from 0 to 1 you can see a better result here maybe from here to here and from here to here now that we have these we can use the same approach here for the mapping of the noise texture so we can link directly the vector of the attribute inside this mapping drop this uh, separate xyz shift and control on the principal bsdf to see the result on our branch wires next the feather has already a material that you can change in a way that you need i will not spend time to this because there is a good video about it you can check it out here or in the link in the description we can focus on the feather base if you want so for the feather base we need another uv map we can go here in the geometry nodes press tab to exit from this group node we can go here 
where we have the feather information press tab to enter in this uh, workflow we can go here in the section base feather and the uv and we can see the name of the feather base uv that we can use in the shading editor so feather base uv we can copy these go to the shading editor f3 attribute paste this value here in the name we can use these in a separate xyz if you want to see the x factor from 0 to 1 and we can use these uh, as before with a wave texture for example not these x but the entire vector here shift ctrl and click to see more wave on the feathers decrease the detail decrease the roughness link this to a color ramp link the color to the base color and change the color as you want so a similar tiger effect uh, on this uh, base save the project now we can think about the pieces uh, of our uh, collection of uh, branch pieces so if i enable these we can select the cone and uh, create a new material for the cone cone we can create a granular effect like a rock so we can use a noise texture link the color to a color ramp use dark values for each of these values here we can link the color base here increase the roughness to 0.95 for example increase the scale to 15 and we can link this factor to a bump effect link these to the height decrease the strength to 0.2 for example and link this normal to the normal of the principal bsdf now select the cube we can make it uh, transparent so we can select a new material for the cubes completely transparent uh, change the base color to red for example go down and make sure to select uh, not the blend mode opaque but uh, alpha hashed here enable the screen space uh, refraction to have a more realistic effect uh, of this uh, transparent uh, object and finally we have the cylinder create a new material oh i forgot to change the cube roughness to one to have a fully transparent object and not opaque or semi-opaque object select the cylinder we can give it an effect like a plastic or nylon material so we can use this subsurface effect 0.3 and remember to click to this subsurface radius and set for each axis one to have the same values of the subsurface effect then change the axis as you want i suggest to start always with one for each axis we can change these with a black color ctrl c to this color and ctrl v to these increase the roughness a little bit if you see these weird effect on this cylinder and you if you want to smooth these you don't need to smooth the entire output of these geometry nodes but you can select only the cylinder right button and shade auto smooth and this is the final result you need to do it only for the object that you need in the branch pieces collection we hide the collection here we have already the material for the rest of these parts and we can say we finished the tutorial i can select this geometry go to the modifier and we can play with all these parameters uh, as you want uh, a very beautiful example is to change these values in this simple way take a look before increasing the web rays uh, i suggest you if you have a problem about the performance to disable these uh, subdivision surface uh, in the editing and in the viewport uh, and leave these only for the render time in this way you can increase easily the web rays and have a little better performance okay with the little changes of the parameters so web resolution to 30 and the trick of uh, leaving zero here and minus the number of web radius divided by two we have a fake effect of a curve that continues its flow 
along this pattern so this is a fake is it's a, an optical illusion because we have only an arc like this in this direction another arc to the opposite side okay because we mirrored the entire web so the entire number of rays but with all these together we can have a beautiful result and this is the final part of this tutorial thank you guys for watching this video i hope you like it and i hope you learned something from it if you want to download this project you can do it from my camera page link in the description i suggest you to watch my previous videos about feathers scaling and positioning and rotating features on curves if you want to leave a comment or check a like if you like what i'm doing please subscribe to my channel and see you to the next tutorial bye